what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Move Better channel. I am your host, Dr. Joe, and this is the professor, John Penasarada. Today, we have a question. What was the question? Question, why do I wake up with my lower back hurting? Okay, so lower back pain when people wake up in the morning. So I get this question a lot. Many of my patients that come into the office, they constantly tell me, maybe it's my bed, maybe it's my pillow, maybe it's something that is external that is making my back pain. And really what it comes down to is you're probably not loading the tissues enough. You're probably not loading your back enough. So a lot of the times people go, I need to change my bed. It's not really your bed. It's probably your lifestyle. I look at it like a big pie chart. There's so many different factors that contribute to back pain, posture, dysfunction with joints and movement. There's a lot of things that actually add up to that. And your bed and your pillow or whatever it is might be just a small piece of that pie. So don't go out and sp start spending thousands of dollars on just a bed to try to fix your back pain because that might not be the issue. People wake up with lower back pain because a lot of the inflammation starts to settle in at the joints, at the discs during overnight, right? Because it's trying to heal. Your body's trying to heal. Your body's trying to adapt overnight and you may wake up with this pain and it's not your bed that's doing the damage. Mm -hmm. It's probably more likely your movement or lack thereof. So today we're gonna teach you some exercises that you might be able to start to do just to start to alleviate some of that pain that you guys might be waking up with. A lot of people start dealing with lower back pain right in this area. So I get it all around the SI joint area. When they wake up, they start walking around and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for that back pain to start to go away because you feel so damn sore from lack of movement. So today, we're gonna start targeting this specific area right around the SI joint and we're gonna try to fix the pain that you guys will be dealing with. So the first thing I'm gonna have him do is just lay face down. One of the things that I want you guys to start to do on a daily basis, not just once a day, throughout the day, maybe once in the morning, once at lunchtime, once at, once at dinner time, or once in the evening, you guys wanna lay down on your stomach here. Now, as you guys are laying down, we're gonna work that posterior chain, the back of the body, in order to create changes. Now, the things that attach to this lower part of the area, what we call the thoracolumbar fascia, there's a lot of muscles that actually attach to that. We have the hamstrings, we have the adductors, we have the butt muscles, we have the glutes, we have your obliques, we have your inner core, we have the lower back muscles, or the, the, the mid back muscles along your spine or your paraspinals, and then we have your lats that attach to this area as well. So we're gonna start by activating the lower half, the, extre the lower extremities, into this area. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna have him lay down your forehead on your hands. Notice he's kind of stretching out his lats at this point. He's laying face down and then he's gonna try to squeeze his butt muscle on the side that we're gonna start to work. Now he's gonna lift that right leg up into the air. And notice he doesn't have to lift it so high to where he's putting pressure into his lower back here. I want his butt muscle, his hamstring, his calves, and even his foot to start to activate and just tension up before I start lifting it up even higher. So as he's doing this, he's just gonna hold this for about 30 seconds or so. After he holds it for 30 seconds, now we're gonna rep it out and we're gonna try to burn that glute or that posterior chain. So he's gonna drop it all the way down. He's gonna lift his foot all the way back up. Drop it down, lift it back up. Drop it down, lift it up. And each time, he's trying to lift it up higher. Now this is where you guys really have to be in tune with your own body. You do not wanna feel this in your lower back. You wanna make sure that you're feeling the pressure, the changes all throughout the hip, the lower half of the leg, okay? Or the, the, the lower extremity, not the lower half. So as he's squeezing, he's lifting up, dropping it all the way back down, squeezing, lifting up, and then you wanna to repeat to the other side. So once again, the set count is gonna be like this. Three sets, one, or uh, 15 repetitions during that time. So it's 30 second hold and then 15 repetitions up and down. You're gonna do that for three sets just to kind of get a burnout here. Cool? All right, the next exercise that we're gonna do, John. We're gonna try to get your natural curvature of your lower back. You can take a pillow or a yoga block like this and we're gonna stabilize the hip real quick. So I'm gonna have Dr. Joe here pin this block between his thighs, okay? And what this will do is it'll stabilize the hip, okay? And while his this position, I'm gonna have him slightly 
rotate the pelvis forward towards his, towards the feet. Okay, it will create a natural your natural curvature lower back. If you're not sure how that feels, you put your hands underneath, and you should be able to fit your hands in there nice and um, uh, easily. All right, so once you're here and you're stabilizing your hip, you get that lower back curved. You got your anterior pelvic tilt. You want to interlace your fingers. Put your palms right next to uh, against each other. Bring your scapula down. So basically, you're trying to depress the shoulders and bring the scapula together in uh, the middle of your back and try to position that, keep that position throughout this exercise. So we're gonna do a pullover, which is basically he's gonna take his hand, he's gonna bring it over his head, see how far he can take it. He's gonna feel a nice stretch right here. And he's also getting activation of the mid to upper thoracic region of his back. And those muscles are gonna help you with uh, positioning and taking up some of the load off your lower back area. And he's gonna rep it out. He's gonna come back up to starting position which is about vertical, and then go back over his head, okay? Again, in this exercise or any of the exercises, make sure you're breathing nice and deep. Try to inhale through your nose if you can. There you go. Nice stretch. He's going to feel his lower back like almost like it's overarching, but try not to do that too much. More or less just the natural curvature of the back, okay? You feel that upper back contracting? Yeah. Okay, and that's activating that side of your back so that you have less tension in the lower back area. Okay, I would rep out about 20 to 30 repetitions. Okay, just one set, or you could do three sets of 10. Okay, depending on your conditioning on these exercises. All right, so another exercise that you guys can do. Now, this might be a little bit difficult for some of you guys at home, but if you guys are at the gym, you guys may be able to find a reverse low back extension machine, or you guys can just find a table, anything that you guys can lay your body down. So John, you're gonna go ahead and lay down on your stomach. You're gonna lay half of your body. Notice his hips are at a 90 degree angle right here. It can drop that down. He's gonna grip onto this table here. And if you can find any way that you could just do a reverse low back extension, he's just gonna kick his legs straight back that way. Hold it right here for a second. Now, like I said before, isometrics help a lot with pain. It doesn't fix everything, but it definitely can increase awareness to the area that you're dealing with pain. And when you increase awareness, you can increase movement. Now, when, when you have pain, a lot of the time you decrease the, away, the awareness or you decrease the way that the body moves. You try to ch change your patterns up. An isometric contraction just like this can help with activating the areas and getting them to move better. So he's just gonna hold that isometric. After he's done that, that's been about 15 to 20 seconds or so. He's gonna go ahead and raise that up. Now he's gonna rep it out. One, if you do these exercises every day, a lot of the time you're not gonna be dealing with that low back pain when you wake up in the morning, okay? Especially in this specific area. Now, like I said before, there might be a lot of different things that contribute to lower back pain. So that's why it's important to get assessed by a professional, like a physical therapist, a chiropractor, or a doctor, anybody that's gonna be able to help you with your movement patterns. Now go ahead and relax. Now for some of you guys that don't have uh, a low back extension or your gym doesn't have a low back extension machine, one of the things that he could do is you could find a stability ball. Most gyms have a stability ball or some of you guys may have that at home. You're gonna go ahead and lay your stomach down on top of that. Now we're first gonna go ahead and do that reverse low back extension. So he's gonna lean over this ball. You can place your elbows down on the floor for me, please. And so his butt is at the peak of the ball. So from here, he's gonna start, well go, go ahead and drop your legs down first. Keep, your, keep his toes down on the ground. He's gonna start for, uh, for, to, to make this um, a little bit more easier for some people. He's gonna start with one leg. You're gonna bring that right leg straight up in the air. Hold it. Now, again, all he's trying to do is work that posterior chain. He's not trying to take the load onto the lower back. He's trying to get his glutes, his glute med, his glute max, his hamstring, his calves, his, even his foot, to try to work on that activation technique of this lower extremity half. Now, as he drops that down, we're gonna do, after he does 30 seconds of that, rep it out for 15 repetitions down, right back up, down, all the way down, tap the ground, and right back up, because we wanna work the full range of motion and contraction of those muscles. The next one he's gonna do, he's gonna switch over to the other side. After he does the other side, at least just one or two sets on each side, you're gonna to go to try to challenge yourself by bringing both legs up. Bring your feet together here, and he's gonna bring it both up here. Now that's a lot more challenging. I feel a lot more engagement of his lower back. So in this case, because he's engaging his lower back more, he's not gonna bring it up as high. 
He's just trying to focus on glute activation, his hamstrings, and his whole posterior chain and trying to create this change in his patterns. So as he's doing this, he's trying to allow more load onto that SI joint, which is normally a, an area of pain that he may be dealing, that you guys may be dealing with when you wake up in the morning. So another thing, staying with the stability ball here, we're gonna go ahead and move on back. So remember, it, there's a lot of things that attach to this specific area. This one, now he's just gonna do a, a posture exercise. Go ahead and spread your feet apart a little bit wider here. Spread your feet apart nice and wide to help with a nice foundation and balance. And as he lifts from here, notice his fingers are pressed into the floor and he's just trying to spread his shoulder blades apart this time. Spread the shoulder blades apart, perfect. And he's just gonna pinch his, his chin through his throat, trying to keep a nice straight line in this area. Now notice he's extending his back. He's trying to create that curvature, kind of like what John was telling us before. We want to have that nice lower doses or that nice rounding of that lower back as he dips his pelvis forward. And as he's doing that, he's pushing his fingers into the floor, spreading his shoulders apart. Now remember, you guys don't just activate or you guys just don't relax in this position. You want to try to continue to push the floor down as he's pushing his body away from the floor and he's keeping that lower doses in this area, right? And that's gonna help that isometric posture to create and or decrease that pain in that lower back. So this next one you could actually do um, while you're laying on, in your bed if you're feeling really tight. So as Dr. Joe's laying on the floor, remember when we, when we talk about hip activation, we're not just going linearly in one, in one plane, we wanna go in multiple planes. So we're gonna have Dr. Joe bend one of his knees um, to about a right angle or so. Okay, just nice and relaxed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the other leg straight out, contract the quads, contract and do a dorsal flex on the ankle. And he's just gonna rotate his leg and hip internally and externally, okay? And you could picture your foot doing like a windshield wiper type of motion. Okay, what this will do is it will activate all of those hip muscles adductors, okay, all the muscles are, that wrap around the hip and anteriorly and posteriorly as well as the uh, middle, medial and lateral side of the hip, okay. And as he's doing this rotation, he's going to actually feel some movement in the lower back area, probably release even more tension in the lower back area because again, you're putting load on the hip muscles to help alleviate some of that load off the lower back area. How's that feeling? Feels good. Pretty good. Yeah. And you'll see the rotation where, it, where um, you may have some limitations, and that's okay. Right? The more you do this, the better it'll get. Okay? Here, I, I would suggest anywhere from two to three sets of 15 to 20 repetitions. Okay? And then after you do that one side, obviously you want to make it even. Always make it even and do the other side. Okay? Contracting the quads, contracting, um, the, uh, doing a dorsal flexion so you're contracting this side of your leg as well. And again, activating all the muscles that wrap around the hip and the inner part of your legs. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed all those exercises. Again, if you wake up in the morning, you're feeling tight in the lower back. Like we said earlier, a lot of times your body has settled overnight. All the inflammation is coming and settling in and trying to relieve some of that tension in the lower back, but it makes the lower back feel like it's really tight. So those exercises will take some of the load off the lower back, create load on other muscles that should be taken up a lot of that uh, stress and load and hopefully help relieve some of that tension. Forget about spending $4,000 in a new bed unless it's really, really janky. <laughs> <laughs> unless it's really needed. Yeah. Right, unless you really, really need it. So subscribe, like, take our, uh, activate the notification. Please give us some comments. If there's other topics that you guys want us to cover for our next series, please let us know. See you guys in the next video.